Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. I know some people say these are not considered functional equations. We only have a single variable, so on and so forth, but I call these functional equations. There are mainly two types. Uh, well, this is one type. The other type usually has two or more variables like on x and y together, and we've just done one recently. Anyways, let's go ahead and solve for f. What is f? Notice one thing here, if 1 minus x is equal to t, then 1 equals x plus t, and 1 minus t is equal to x. So, these two are kind of like inverse functions, or if you try to find the inverse of 1 minus x, you're going to uh, get the same thing. The inverse of 1 minus x is 1 minus x. Okay. So what is that supposed to mean? It means we're going to replace replace x with 1 minus x. And, uh, you know, we don't have to use the same variable. Or we can replace x with 1 minus, or, you know, we can replace 1 minus x with y or t or whatever, and then eventually turn it into, but this is more direct. That's why I like this approach. So if you replace x with 1 minus x, it's equivalent to replacing 1 minus x with x. Remember that because that's what we just, you know, discovered. So let's do it. Replace x with 1 minus x here. 1 minus x times f of 1 minus x plus f of 1 minus 1 minus x. You can kind of test it out if you want, but you're going to get x from here. All right? So... This is going to give you f of x, which is cool. The right-hand side is just going to be 1 minus x. Now, I got another equation. I have my original equation. So we got two equations, and that is a system of equations, right? So let's go ahead and rewrite the first one. Trying to align the plus signs and the equal signs. And we get the following system. Nice. Now, we're going to solve this system, and since we're looking for f, it makes sense if you try to solve this for f of x, right? To solve for f of x, I'd like to get rid of f of 1 minus x in both of the equations. So, in other words, I'm going to be using elimination. But how to use elimination? You negate the coefficients. when The sum uh, becomes 0. So, the coefficient of f of 1 minus x here is 1 minus x. And the coefficient of 1 minus x here is 1. So if I can get the opposite coefficients, when, they, when we add them, they're going to be 0. What's the opposite of 1 minus x? The answer is easy. x minus 1. 1 minus x and x minus 1 are opposites. Because when you add them, you get 0, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply both sides of the second equation by x minus 1, which is the opposite of 1 minus x. And of course, I have to do it on both sides. I'm trying to write 1 minus x, I don't know why. This is supposed to be x minus 1. And yes, you can multiply from the left. Okay. And distribute. Let's go ahead and distribute, and we're going to write our system again one more time. So the first one stays the same. Or should I say, first one stays the same. And then... The second one becomes x minus 1 times x, that's x squared minus x, times f of x, plus, this one has 1 as a coefficient, so it's just going to be x minus 1 times f of 1 minus x, and the result is going to be x squared minus x. Great. So now we can go ahead and add these up. Since the coefficients of f of 1 minus x are opposites, when we add them, the sum will be 0. Right? Because 1 minus x plus x minus 1 is 0. They cancel out. I have this plus 1 times f of x. So that's going to be adding like terms. x squared minus x plus 1 multiply by f of x equals. These two add up to what? x squared minus x minus x minus 2x plus 1. Wow, that's kind of special. It's x minus 1 squared, but nobody cares, right? So from here... Notice that x squared minus x plus 1 can never be 0, so we don't have to worry about dividing by 0 here, which is cool. Anyways, divide both sides by that, and you're going to get an expression for f of x. Great. So that's the end of it? No. 
we're going to go ahead and check our answer. What if we made a mistake, right? You know, a lot of times teachers say, show your work and then plug it in and check your work and so on and so forth. A lot of times people don't want to do it, but it's a good idea. Anyways, let's just test it out, right? Just for fun. Let's see if this is actually going to work because this kind of looks monstrous and I'm not sure if it's going to satisfy the original equation. Do you think it's going to work? All right, let's see. I'm going to replace f of x with what it is. And then f of 1 minus x means just replaced x with 1 minus x everywhere and so on and so forth. So x times f of x, which is x squared minus 2x plus 1 divided by x squared minus x plus 1. Plus f of 1 minus x is the interesting one. 1 minus x squared minus 2 times 1 minus x plus 1 divided by 1 minus x squared minus 1 minus x plus 1. Wow, that is crazy. Let's go ahead and simplify this. How do you simplify? Multiply the x by the numerator. Get x cubed minus 2x squared plus x. There's probably an easier way to do it, but anyways. Just kind of doing brute force here. Here, the second part is going to become the following. 1 minus 2x plus x squared from the perfect square. Minus 2 plus 2x plus 1. That is the top. The bottom is 1 minus 2x plus x squared again. But minus 1 plus x plus 1 this time. All right, let's go ahead and simplify this. How do we simplify that? Negative 2x and positive 2x cancels out. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. 2 cancels out. Oh, that's crazy. We end up with a single x squared. That's really nice. Cool. Negative 1 and positive 1 cancels out, but that's it. But guess what? That's actually a good thing because this gives us a common denominator. x squared in the numerator. And the bottom is going to be x squared minus x plus 1 because negative 2x plus x is negative x, adding like terms, right? You like it? Okay, now we have a common denominator. We can go ahead and add the numerators. And this is the funnest part. x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus x squared, just add them. And the bottom is just going to be the same. And now we can add like terms. Negative 2x squared plus x squared is negative x squared right? x cubed minus x squared plus x. And of course, while checking your work, you can make a mistake and get the wrong answer for the wrong reason. Anyways, this is what I get from here. And then what am I going to do with this? Hmm. Polynomial division, uh, long division, short division. No, no, no. You don't need to do any of that. Factor. Yes, exactly. Because the top has a common factor, x. Take it out. You're going to get x squared. This is how the story unfolds minus x plus 1, and the bottom is x squared minus x plus 1. They cancel out, giving us x, which is real cool because we start, started off with this, and we got x, which checks our work. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.